Hey folks, thanks for joining me in another video. I finally got another knife review for you, and uh, this one kind of jumped to the front of the pack. A few people have requested this knife uh, in particular to be reviewed, and so I went ahead and kind of moved it to the front of the queue. This is the Spyderco Techno. Model number is C158TI. I imagine the TI being for titanium, which is the handle material. Uh, this is widely available as of the recording of this video. You can find it just about anywhere online. I'm sure if you've got a nice uh, mid to high-end knife shop local to you, they probably have this one there as well. Now, the uh, manufacturer's suggested retail price, uh, Spyderco themselves, prices this at $309.95, which is uh, quite high. That's in U.S. dollars, of course. Um, but in general, you know, as with most knives, the actual street price is going to be a lot less Right now, as of this video, you're looking at spending about 155 to 180, depending on where you're buying. Maybe you're going to eBay or, you know, one of the popular online knife shops, but somewhere in that range. So, for what you're getting, it, it I do consider it to be pricey. This is a little bit high for me, just in general. But overall, the price is not too bad, uh, considering the materials that you get here. And this really is quite the premium blade. So uh, available just about everywhere, that's the price you'll pay. Now the uh, country of origin is Taiwan. This was made in Spider Coast Taichung factory. And they've got uh, several knives that are coming out of that factory. And I must say, I'm a big fan of Spider Coast US made knives, but the uh, Taiwanese knives that Spider Co has coming in are probably some of the absolute best in terms of overall quality and fit and finish, at least in my experience. Now when I go online and I talk to other folks who are also big fans of Spyderco, I, I see that that's uh, fairly universal. The Taiwanese Spyderco knives are just exceptional in the overall build quality, in the fit and finish, how well the edges are finished, uh, you, you know, just little details, how well uh, different portions of the knife are matched you know how well different surfaces are mated so this knife is no exception this arrived to me with uh, absolutely wonderful tolerances very well built uh, the quality overall is just really really high and I'm really happy with how well you know the Taiwanese factory did with this knife now the designer of the knife I'm I absolutely guarantee you I'm gonna mispronounce this name uh, I recommend that you look it up online to <laughs> maybe someone has a proper pronunciation I'm not sure uh, Marcin Slice or Mar Mar Marcin Slice. I don't know how to pronounce uh, this knife maker's name, and I'm not very familiar with their work. They have a few other production knives, I believe, that are also out there, but I'm not sure of any of the others. Just this one. So someone out there probably knows how to pronounce it. If you would want to send me a comment with a phonetic pronunciation, I would really appreciate it. But I did want to give credit where it's due. Uh, there are no, at least as far as the Spyderco production model, there are no variations of this knife. So you'll just find the one Spyderco Techno. Just comes in the one color, the one configuration, you know, one blade style, and that's it. Uh, there is a custom version of this knife available from that same knife maker, which is uh, a little bit different in the overall design. I believe it has a different name. I don't think it's called the Techno. Uh, so you can look that one up if you wanted to see a slightly different version, and I imagine that one's going to cost you quite a bit more to get your hands on it, as that will be a custom-made knife. Now, I've had this uh, Spyderco Techno for about three months. I received it as a birthday present from my lovely wife, and uh, I've been very happy with it. It's gotten a lot of use. You almost couldn't tell by looking at it. The blade has been sharpened and stropped several times, and I've used it for just about all sorts of cutting tasks. Now, um... I'll get into, in a moment, I'll get into a little bit more in depth on what this knife, to me, is actually good for and, you know, what you should be looking for when you decide to purchase it. But uh, just in general, you know, just a, a little quick preview. For most general EDC tasks, you know, you just have a knife on you in your pocket. Maybe you're cutting up a little bit of produce. Maybe you're cutting, uh, breaking down some cardboard, paper, you know, cord, that type of thing. Even taking it with you out on the trail, hiking, camping. I think this would make a great knife. As long as you can, you know, keep its limitations, you know, its size and uh, the design in mind, I think you'll be really happy with it. The blade length is 2.55 inches. On Spyderco's knives, also, uh, if you ever hear my specs, they all come from Spyderco's website. That so a lot of times you'll hear very specific measurements, and that's because Spyderco gives their uh, measurements in uh, hundreds of an inch. And so that's why when I review a Spyderco knife, I'll give you those numbers to that exacting degree. 2.55 inch blade, 5.98 inches overall, just shy of 6 inches in length when opened all the way. And when closed, 3.43 inches 
is the length from end to end. Weight is 3.6 ounces, and that matches on my scale. It's a rather light knife um, for how thick it is. You know, it's it's definitely got a you know a chunky look to it, which I think you can see right away. But 3.6 ounces is not bad at all, and for its size and the uh, overall design, I think this will just about disappear in anyone's pocket, bag, purse, wherever you want to carry it. Blade steel is the uh, very popular and very current, this is a really popular and new knife steel, that is the CTS XHP steel from Carpenter Steel. And Spyderco describes this, and from what I've read online, others seem to agree, and I would say in my experience, uh, it meshes with this. Spyderco says that this steel has the uh, overall strength, similar properties to D2 steel, which is a tool steel, and it is uh, all, now D2 steel is almost stainless. It, it has uh, some corrosive properties that kind of keep it from being a true stainless steel. It's actually one of my favorite steels. I've got a couple knives with it and I've been really happy with it. And it holds an edge for a very long time. It takes a little bit more effort to get a razor sharp edge from it when it's gone dull. But once it is sharpened, it, the edge will last a very long time. So CTS XHP is supposed to give you the same general properties as D2 steel but uh, in an actual true stainless steel, so much more corrosion resistant. And to that end, I have had absolutely no rust issues. Uh, here in Southern California, there's some decent humidity at any given time. Uh, it's not one of the most humid places on the planet, but you know we've got some uh, general humidity here that, uh, that has had no issue with the blade. No rusting, no spotting, no pitting, absolutely nothing at all. Uh, and that's, you know, I think that with most of the stainless steels, that's been my experience here in Southern California. You know, even AUS-8, something that's maybe not quite as resistant, I still don't really seem to have much of a problem with rust here. So whatever you're expecting from this steel in your area, I'd say this is probably going to be, you know, about standard. Blade thickness is a tremendous four and a half millimeters. Very thick. In fact, let me see. I've got a, here's a Spyderco Endura. And I'll give you a little quick comparison the blade thickness there. Uh, Spyderco Endura I'd say for its size and length this is probably a you know a general a medium thickness steel. It's about on par with what you'd find on a knife this size. So the Spyderco uh, Techno is much thicker and has a very stout and chunky blade which I think most people if you already like the design just from the look of it I think you'll be really happy with how it feels and how it performs. Blade shape is sort of a sort of a strange drop point there with this little hump at the back of the blade, which I really like. Uh, this is a fully flat ground blade, as you can see. So you go from the full thickness at the back, at the spine of the blade, and then it just tapers straight down in a V-grind, right down to the final sharpened edge. And I'm not sure of the exact angle that Spyderco sharpens this at, but I have been touching it up on my Spyderco Sharp Maker at 20 degrees per side, 40 degrees inclusive. And uh, that seemed to hit the edge pretty much right away, so I'd say it's real close to 20 degrees from the factory, at least in my experience on this particular knife. The factory edge was excellent. It was very sharp right out of the box. I can't guarantee that yours will be, but this one was tremendously sharp and sliced beautifully right away, and I did not have to sharpen it for some time. The edge bevel symmetry is excellent. Sometimes you get one where it's a little bit thicker or higher on one side than the other. These are very, very similar. And this CTS XHP over the last three months has held up very well. It holds a very keen edge for a really long time. It's easy to sharpen. Um, D2 to me is a little bit tough to sharpen. I found this to be a little bit easier. So uh, I'd say that this is uh, not too bad as far as bringing it from a dull edge back up to a very sharp edge. You should be fine. And if you're keeping it sharp all the time and just giving it you know, a regular hone or strop now and then, I don't think it's going to take you any time at all. Handle materials, as I mentioned before, we have uh, titanium handle slabs, no liners, this is just a frame lock there. And then we've got some torque screws, there is a dual T8, that's a, a size 8 torque screw at the pivot, and then we have T6 uh, in the body there, just the two screws, and then finally uh, T8 again at the, uh, I'm losing my train of thought, at the pocket clip location. I believe that probably also helps to hold the body together back there. Ooh, let's see, backspacer is this lovely blue G10. It's got sort of this raised jimping. You can see it sticks out beyond the back of the handle body there, which gives a very satisfying feel. I'm not really a big fan of jimping in general, but I think this feels wonderful. It's got sort of this cool gear 
sort of industrial design to it. And I think that that contrasting blue against that deep dark gray of the handles is just really, really cool, really pretty. I really like it. Uh, it is not skeletonized, of course. We just have full thickness titanium. It does have a little bit of titanium milled out in the handle to uh, you know aid in helping the lock bar move over there and to help you so it's not so heavy when you're actually disengaging the lock bar and moving it out of the way. So that's the only part that's really going to have any little cutouts. And no texturing to speak of, although the titanium does have sort of a light stonewash finish to it. And uh, it's not super slippery. And just in general, I think that titanium is kind of tacky. It has sort of a sticky feel to it, which is really nice. So it's actually fairly grippy. And we do have some jimping. Uh, we've got a little bit back here. Uh, well, as I mentioned, there's some on the uh, G10 backspacer, but then we also have some at the spine of the blade that sort of mates up with that little edge there on the handle. And uh, not overly aggressive, but not too smooth, kind of in the middle. A little bit slippery, but I think that it, uh, it actually you know, does a little, add a little bit more grip than there would be if it wasn't there at all. And it's quite comfortable because of the width and the rounded edges to those little serrations at the back. Overall design comfort, you know, I think is, is excellent. Now I have read some people complaining of some hot spots. At the moment it escapes me exactly where they were. I've, I've read them, but I forget where people were saying they were. And I think that's due in part to the fact that I don't find any discomfort in using this knife. There are a couple things that aren't exactly as smooth as they could be, but as far as just holding it in my hand, it's perfect. I don't find, there's nothing, the, the pocket clip, is uh, you know it's not too high off the handle it rests comfortably in the palm of my hand you can get four fingers on the handle the last one kinda hanging off the edge just a little bit but still a nice full four finger grip and then the thing that I really like about this is that on a lot of spider codes you have that really pronounced hump at the back of the knife and sometimes that's right where I want to put my thumb and it can be a little bit uncomfortable but because of the uh, low slope on the back of the blade there this one my thumb can go all the way forward for more controlled close-up cutting or move further back and it's all equally comfortable and so that's one of my favorite parts of this knife is just the overall comfort so uh, one of the things I will mention as far as discomfort that I think that someone may have some slight complaint about but it's really not that big of a deal is uh, getting into the the opening hole here if you look because the handles are thick and because it has this uh, relatively at least in relation to the opening hole it's a relatively small cutout in the handle and just sort of fits real close to that circle it's a little deep putting your thumb into the opening hole to reach in there and then when you go to close it because the knife itself is fairly small the larger your hands are probably I, I'm my hands are medium to large I'd say that folks with larger hands are probably gonna have more of an issue closing it it can be a little bit uh, it's a little bit of a tight space to get some good control. You do get used to it after a while, but I would say that for most folks, this is not going to be a fast knife. This is not a knife that uh, you can flick it out, but because of the depth of this little cutout, it makes flicking it a little bit slower. You tend to kind of hit that little edge there, but it's not uncomfortable. It just makes the knife a little bit slower, a little bit more uh, you know, intentional in your opening. And I think that that's fine. I think that it suits the design overall. So I don't think it's gonna be a problem. Uh, on that note though, I do want to say if you are left-handed, this may not be the knife for you. Now, I'm not a lefty and I struggle to open knives in general well with my left hand. And I'd say this is one of the tougher knives for me to open left-handed. I mean, it's I, I can do it. I don't want to cut myself doing it on camera. I'm actually struggling to try and open it right now. Um, it's probably easier to open with one of your fingers when you're left-handed rather than your thumb because there is no cutout on the left-hand scale for your thumb to uh, reach in there. So if you were using your index finger or your middle finger to kind of start the blade open and then use your thumb to run it the rest of the way or whatever you arrive at, that's probably your best bet. But the, the small size and the lack of a cutout for the opening hole on the left hand side, uh, that makes me want to say if you're a lefty, think it over or maybe try one out at your local knife store or you know see if if you know someone that's got one, see if you can borrow it for a day and carry it around and see if it's going to work for you before you take the plunge, you know, to the tune of 160, 170 bucks. So lefties, keep that in mind. Uh, we do have a lanyard hole, and it is perfectly suited for paracord. So if you want to put some non-gutted 550 paracord through there, no problems. Gutted, you could probably double it through. Uh, I only just push some through just to check it, but I think most of the usual lanyard configurations are going to work fine. We do have a pocket clip, and it is left and right hand tip up. So if you do decide to go lefty on this one and that 
uh, opening holes and going to slow you down, you do have a pocket clip option. Pocket clip depth is nearly, uh, it nearly completely hides the knife. You can see that just be because of how far uh, up the handle it is, it's almost completely obscured. So I would consider this to be a deep carry pocket clip and it is a nice little snappy wire clip. It's not the strongest clip and it is a little bit wiggly from side to side, but I don't think that's going to be a problem for most folks. Uh, overall pocket comfort is ex excellent. Excuse me, when this is in your pocket, it nearly disappears. I don't notice it at all. It doesn't matter which type of pants that I'm wearing. Once it's in my pocket, I completely forget that it's there, which is pretty much the highest compliment I can pay to the pocket clip and pocket comfort of any knife at all. Overall balance is really good. It's maybe a little bit handy. Ooh, I'm losing my, uh, I'm getting a little tongue tied there. Let me slow her down. It's a little bit handle heavy, in my opinion. You know, it kind of wants to tilt back but with such a small design, it's really not going to matter. The opening mechanism is obviously Spyderco's lovely trademarked round opening hole, and it works perfectly. It's a little bit oversized uh, for the overall size of the knife. You know, it looks big, but if you put it up next to something standard like the Endura, you can see that they're almost nearly the same. It might be a little bit bigger, but it works really well. And other than that deep cutout that I mentioned earlier, I don't think anyone's going to have any troubles opening this right-handed whatsoever. The pivot washers are bronze and they're smooth, but it's not super fast. So I don't find the knife to be sticky and it does have a smooth travel, but you can see, I mean, just the way I have the pocket tension, you know, it's not, the blade isn't very floppy, but I don't think that that really is, uh, you know, I don't think that this knife is meant to be very fast. I think this knife is a little bit more, it's a little bit slower, a little bit more deliberate. Uh, I know I get chastised a lot for saying this, but to me this is uh, you know pushing really close to a gentleman's knife. I think that it's it's classy. I think that the uh, quality of the materials included, the overall uh, design, the size, the feel of it, I think that this is sort of like a hardcore sort of tough use gentleman's knife. And uh, you know, oh well, that's what I'm that's what I'm calling it. Blade centering is absolutely perfect. Uh, it has been since day one. I haven't had to mess with the pivot to, to change the tension or anything. And the blade has stayed centered the entire time, which you don't always get with a frame lock or a liner lock. Sometimes that lock, when the blade is closed, will push against it. And over time, it can kind of make the blade a little wonky. Not so here. Uh, as I mentioned, it is a frame lock. Here is the lockup after three months for anyone that's interested. I've had no issues, no lockup problems, no wobble, no play in any direction. So it's just been absolutely rock solid all the way around. No rattling parts. There's nothing to rattle. So there's no clinking. There's no uh, you know shifty little noises as you move the knife around as you sometimes get with the more fancy or gimmicky type locks. Overall strength is absolutely fantastic. Uh, I would say that this is actually a hard use knife. I think that as long as the length of the blade and the thickness of the blade are up to the task that you're uh, trying to use it for. I think that you could use this knife for just about anything. I mean, this is a really stout, very tough knife. Expertly built, expertly designed. Use it for just about anything. I will show you real quick. Uh, I don't normally do cut tests, but I do want to show you that the thickness of the blade doesn't seem to hinder its slicing ability whatsoever. I mean, it just, it goes through, of course, this always happens when I'm on camera, it starts to kind of catch. But it goes through, uh, you know, paper just fine, glides through tape. The only thing that you want to keep in mind, and, that, and it's the same with any really thick blade, is if you're going through cardboard. Now, it'll slice cardboard just fine. But if you're going through a really deep piece of it, that thicker blade, as you cut through, can slow you down. It can kind of bind up because it's thicker. But I mean, that's just, I mean, that's usually pretty obvious. And even, and even so, you can see that it still holds up very well. So, very good slicer despite the thickness. Almost like a big chunky mini kitchen knife, chef knife kind of look to it. Fit and finish is amazing as I mentioned at the beginning of this review. Taiwan, uh, Taichung Taiwan does excellent in their, uh, their overall quality control. Just absolutely superb. I have no complaints with the fit and finish whatsoever. And this has extremely tight tolerances all around. So, real quick, give you my little rundown of the pros and cons and then we'll uh, end this review. This knife is uh, quite lightweight for the thickness of the blade and handle. It's got an excellent small size that makes it really convenient. Super, super tough design, extremely strong lockup. It's got that wonderful deep carry clip. Um, you know, for those of you that like a, an easily concealable knife, this one's going to work very well for you there, which makes it very discreet. 
Uh, amazing blade steel. The CTS XHP has been fantastic in my, in my experience. This is my second knife with it, and I'm a big fan, and I'm becoming more of a fan as I get to use it, so I'm really happy with that. Super thick blade that's just going to last you years and years. It's good looking. Now, I know that's my opinion, but I'm going to put that in the, uh, in the positive side of this review. Uh, reasonably easy to open and close, especially right-handed, left -hand lefties, maybe try before you buy. And uh, the small size of the blade, you know, that two and a half, uh, roughly two and a half inch blade, uh, makes it nice and legal in a lot of places that some other size knives wouldn't be. So what I like about that is it gives you the satisfaction of having a chunky, hard use, you can really depend on it type knife in a very small package that is, uh, that's definitely going to be legal in a lot of places that, again, some other knives might, you know, maybe not be. And the, the overall look, the bright color backspacer, the small size makes it really public friendly. So if you tend to carry knives, if you get you know raised eyebrows, you get some extended stares from other folks when you're using your knife out in public, this one I don't think is going to cause any problems. I think it's it's almost kind of cute, so I don't think anyone's going to you know raise a stink at the at the look of it. And uh, it is absolutely recommended. It's one of my favorite knives of the past few years. I think that it's really classy. I think that it's an excellent hard use knife. Not going to give you any troubles with people thinking that you're carrying some sort of wild tactical weapon. And I think that it's definitely built to last. So uh, that's pretty much it. I might have missed a few things, kind of rushed through this review. And of course, it was much longer than, <laughs> than you know the average review out there. But that's just usually how I roll. I'll give you some quick side comparisons here on the way out. Here is my uh, beloved Spyderco Superleaf. I love this knife. Expect a review on this soon. I absolutely adore this knife. Another really thick blade. Let's put those side by side. You can see those are really close. If anything, I think the Techno is half a millimeter thicker, just a little bit. But both really, really thick, stout blades. I'd say these are both just as strong. Uh, maybe I'd give a little bit, a little bit of an edge to the compression lock as far as, you know, overall confidence. But I, I would say any task that the Super Leaf was up to, and it is a hard use knife, I'd say that the Techno could probably match it. Here's the Endura, just for a length comparison for those of you who may own one of those. And then real quick, the Ontario Rat 1 folder. Get a little size comparison there. You can see just how small, just how absolutely diminutive that Spyderco Techno is. And then finally, there's a Kershaw Random Leak, which I think is the same basic overall length as your standard leak. For those of you who may have that one, a little bit of a idea of how that's going to work out in your pocket or next to your other knives. So there it is, the Spyderco Techno. That is my review. I hope that you found it entertaining, uh, if not informative. And uh, I hope to bring you some more reviews in the future. Definitely pick one up if you're interested in the design. If you like the look, this gets my highest recommendation. Again, one of my favorite knives of the past couple of years. Just a wonderful design. It cuts beautifully and you don't even know you're carrying it until you need it, which is, you know, one of the best parts of a lot of knives. So there you have it. Thanks so much for watching, and I will talk to you all soon. Bye.